All the way my Savior leads me Cheers each winding path I tread Gives me grace for every trial Feeds me with the living bread Good morning, Chester ARP Church devotional podcast. Clint Davis, your host. Hey, thanks again for joining us today. We are in 2 Samuel chapter 11, beginning in verse 14 of 2 Samuel chapter 11. And we're going to talk about David's continued situation with Bathsheba. Verse 14, in the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him that he may be struck down and die. And as Joab was besieging the city, he assigned Uriah to the place where he knew there would be valiant, valiant men. And the men of the city came out and fought with Joab, and some of the servants of David among them people fell. Uriah the Hittite also died. Then Joab sent and told David all the news about the fighting, and instructed the messenger, When you have finished telling all the news about the fighting to the king, then if the king's anger arises, and if he says to you, Why did you go so near to the city to fight? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? Who killed Abimelech, the son of Jerusabeth? Did not a woman cast an upper millstone on him from the wall so that he died at Thebaz? Why did you go so near to the wall? Then you shall say, the servant, your servant Uriah, the Hittite, is dead also. So the messenger went and came and told David and all Joab had sent, and t- had sent him and told him. And then the messenger said to David, The men gained an advantage over us and came out against us in the field. But when we drove back to the entrance of the gate, then the archers shot at your servants from the wall. Some of the king's servants are dead, and your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. David said to the messenger, Thus you shall say to Joab, Do not let this matter displease you, for the sword devours now one and now another. Strengthen your attack against the city and overthrow it. Encourage him. And the wife, when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she lamented over her husband. And when the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. So we have here the story of David and Bathsheba, not only being a story where David has gone after Uriah's wife and taken her her, to be his own uh, wife and and, and committed adultery uh, against his wives and also against Uriah uh, and uh, with Bathsheba. We have the story now of David setting up a situation where Uriah's loyalty was greater than David's loyalty. Uh, Uriah was a man of virtue, uh, more so than David was in this case, and he refused to go home and be with Bathsheba when his fellow men were out on the battlefield fighting for the king. And so he stays at the king's house. So we have all this kind of crazy contrast here between them. We have this the sin of adultery, uh, which is a sin of theft, as well as um, uh, a sin of, uh, of desire that for something that's not yours. Coveting is the word I'm looking for. Um, but uh, we have a variety of different things going on here. Uh, a breaking of the vow, etc. Now David, in order to cover this whole thing up, sends Uriah to the battlefield with a letter to Joab, who has to follow David's letter. It has to follow David's order. And the order is to put Uriah near the front lines, and when everybody is fighting hard, to pull away and let Uriah get killed, to ensure that Uriah gets killed. In this sense, David is a murderer. He plots the murder of Uriah to cover up uh, the sin of his adultery. So now we have David not only being an adulterer, we have David being a murderer. And this is a, a, you don't get much more drastic than that when it comes to sin in the Old Testament. Uh, And so we find David doing these things and and getting caught up in his own sin. And we we notice here when the the, the desire, uh, the self-desire, the self-fulfillment is not kept in check, it can lead us in a path of of great destruction and and, and we'll have a wake of of, um, destruction that follows after us. And so we see that with David here. And um, it's important to note here, you know, sometimes we read this story, we think about David being a murderer, we think about David being an adulterer, we're quick to jump to God's forgiveness. And certainly 
Uh, that is true. God is a God of grace and mercy. He still uses David. Uh, we're going to see tomorrow as he uh, exposes David through Nathan the prophet. And then David will confess that sin in Psalm 51. And, and God is gracious to forgive. But I don't want to jump too quickly into that. I want to notice the significance of the sin and, and, and the consequence here. You've got a man who's dead. You've got families who are destroyed as a result of David's act of adultery. You've got a woman who has conceived a child. Now she's going to have to come into David's family, and David's going to take Bathsheba in, and they'll raise the child. Of course, the son will die, and then the next son will be Solomon, which will cause problems with Absalom, his other son. And so this is a, a situation that, that's got significant consequence and, and, and causes tremendous dysfunction in the family because David in his his lustful desire acted uh, quickly without thinking through it, without being able to control the body. And so it's important to note here that we've got a variety of situations now, uh, a variety of consequences that are, that are grave. And that's the way it always is. There are grave consequences for our sins. And uh, we have to be mindful of that, especially when there are sins of self-indulgence. And so now David is uh, not only an adulterer, but he's a murderer. And now you have Uriah's family that no longer has their son, their uncle, their brother, uh, husband, etc., and all those kinds of things because David orchestrated this event to cover up a sin that he committed. God won't let that go unpunished, and God won't let that go un unnoticed. Uh, and so David has to recognize that, and God does that. And uh, But he is full of grace, for sure. But I want to note the significance of David's sin here uh, for us today. Let's not skip over it. You guys take care. God bless you. But be mindful of the fact that though this sin is significant, God's grace is more significant and that God will forgive him and will use him. But there are consequences to our actions. We got to own them and we got to give God praise for who he is and repent of those sins. You guys take care. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. You carry me close to your heart. Surely your goodness and mercy will find